So another key concept for all the work that I do is this notion of a crisis of meaning. So that's what I want to present in this part of my presentation. And the point of this idea is that pretty much all the work I do is oriented and based in this notion of modern times being a crisis of meaning and experiencing a crisis of meaning. And whether that's the work on conservatism, on marriage, monogamy, you know, socialism, all those things, like all my work is based in the assumption of a crisis of meaning. So let me say a bit more about what that means and what that means for, for us <laughs> living in this modern time. Um, so conservatives will, you know, sort of claim that something very recent is a cause for the decline from the golden age that they're talking about. Um, that they're vaguely pointing to, um, but it's it's really not true. I, if you're really looking for the sources of a crisis of meaning in modern times, I mean, it's hard to not start with the Protestant Reformation at the very latest, um, if not the Renaissance before that. But it's clear that by the time of the Renaissance, the reason why lots of people are are, are ready to move away from the Catholic Church is because the Catholic Church is myths and symbols and, and its narrative about itself was becoming dissatisfying somehow to many people. And that begins with a bit of a crisis of meaning. But maybe maybe the most modern articulation of it <clears throat> is Nietzsche declaring that God is dead and that we killed God with, by not needing God anymore. That's exactly what modern means. Modern means a break with the past. And so modern times really is a time where, like in autonomous reasoning, we're breaking with the past. Um, in any case, um, I would say that the issue has become um, more acute since the Industrial Revolution, and um, and thus throughout, especially like the you know 20th century when we're entering a stage of more like late capitalism with um, uh, like shareholders rather than direct owners of businesses. Um, and there's a lot of reasons for this, and probably, probably I'll be making another video comparing um, this modern crisis of meaning with the ancient crisis of meaning that struck the Greeks and led to Greek philosophy in a similar way that the modern crisis of meaning uh, led to the Enlightenment. Um, <clears throat> but Charles Taylor, um, philosopher of um, self, wrote in 1992 about, you know, the malaise of modernity, the disenchantment of the world, a loss of the heroic dimension of life, and a notion that instrumental reason, I've been telling you about that in, in terms of the Enlightenment, that instrumental reason threatens to take control of our lives and also worries about the disappearance of moral horizons. So if we push sort of self-interest as, like, as one of the most important forces in society, um, there's also a worry about moral horizons and heroic living. Theologian Paul Tillich, I think one of the best analyses of modern life, uh, even for non-Christians, a very worthwhile read, um, talks about a spiritual void produced by the Protestant Reformation and, like I mentioned, the autonomous reason of Enlightenment society. So Tillich is a Lutheran, so for him to talk about Protestant Reformation creating a spiritual void, uh, you know he's a good read. Uh, but, you know, the main thing to say is that this has been uneven. And the crisis has looked like a lot of things over the past five centuries, you know, since the Protestant Reformation. Um, and for one, it hasn't always looked like a crisis of meaning. Um, in Luther's day, it looked like a crisis of guilt. Luther was just racked by guilt, Martin Luther, um, the, uh, the, the founder of the Protestant Reformation. Um, absolutely racked by guilt. Um, the symbols and myths of the Catholic Church were not helping him relieve his guilt, which is a sign that they were starting to weaken, at least for him and for others that supported him. Um, <clears throat> but even in Luther's day, uh, you know, not everyone was racked by guilt the way that Martin Luther was. Um, and so, you know, what we the first thing to say about these crises is that they're extremely uneven. And even the crisis of meaning today is not saying that everybody's living in a crisis all the time, or that everybody will even experience a crisis in their lifetime. Um, and there are many people whose lives are profoundly meaningful, 
Um, and they'd be like, I don't know what you're talking about. And yet, you know, if you read a bunch of literature from, you know, Martin Luther's day, uh, you see the guilt. It's nonetheless a theme, even if it's not everybody. You you sense um, the, the the anxiety about punishment and, and forgiveness. And there are other eras, this is uh, Paul Tillich saying this, where morbidity, especially like 19th century, thinking of like Frankenstein, but where morbidity is one of the, the major, it's not so much loss of meaning, but just a loss of a sense of life, liveliness. Um, one is obsessed with death even during life. And so you kind of wonder, are people even living? Um, but ever since Nietzsche, the crisis of guilt, the crisis of morbidity and obsession with death has really transformed into a crisis of meaning where one of the traits of modern times is an emptiness, a sense that we are living sort of mechanically and um, you know, self-interest, but living within a large mechanism. And then we've lost like the sort of meaning, the deeper meaning of that mechanism, or at least lost sight of it. And, um, and it's not to say that everybody is struck by this emptiness, but, you know, when you think about, I don't know, suicide, like suicide has always existed, but you just feel <clears throat> just reading the literature as a whole of, of the era, um, so many books about, about people struggling with meaning and, and, um, um, catcher in the rye or, or whatever, or, or the phonies, um, you know, there's so many books about people struggling with meaning and also just from our own experience, people not sure what the purpose of existence is. So it's uneven, but when the crisis kind of hits, and it hits especially during times of economic downturn, you know, at times when the things that we can sort of quote-unquote fill our lives with or even distract ourselves with become less accessible because we have less money and so we're focused on the bare bones of existence, but then because the meaning of our life was fragile anyway, and we're just living to live, um, the crisis comes out. And, you know, I would argue that conservatism is essentially a reaction to uh, this crisis of meaning. Um, conservatism is essentially, you know, a complaint about it. And even though the solutions that it proposes are actually not very related or even very helpful for the problem that they're underlining, Nonetheless, that's one of the big contributions of conservatism is to underline this crisis of meaning and to say, hey, this matters and this needs to be in the public sphere. And I would agree. I think, I think it is an important public issue um, that society benefits from naming openly.